again, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News, and uh, this one is being made for release on the 3rd of May. That's a Thursday. We're going to continue talking about what's happening in Syria, which I think is quite momentous. Uh, the headline in this particular news release from Debka File, Bombing Spread in Syria as Al-Qaeda Seizes Control of Rebel Factions. Now, this is quite interesting because of one term that's used, Al-Qaeda. We've been hearing and will continue to hear, I'm sure, particularly after the death of Osama bin Laden, that uh, Al-Qaeda is done for. Al-Qaeda's goose is cooked. They are no longer a factor. But actually, they are coming by the thousands now <clears throat> out of uh, the countries to the east through Iraq and into Syria. Let me read a few words from this uh, article, datelined April 30th, around the first anniversary of the death of al-Qaeda's iconic leader Osama bin Laden at the hands of U.S. Special Forces. The jihadist movement is making an operational comeback in the Arab world and in Africa. In the Arab world and in Africa. Al-Qaeda is growing in Northeast Africa, the Ar Arabian Peninsula, Egypt, Syria, and Iraq. In other words, Al-Qaeda is still a vigorous and growing uh, presence. <clears throat> the suicide bomb bombings hitting Damascus and Idlib in the last 24 hours were the work of Al-Qaeda and Iraq. Now, that was earlier this week. Uh, by the way, Al-Qaeda in Iraq is abbreviated AQI. And if you see that, those three letters, AQI, that's what's being spoken of. AQI, whose operatives have been pouring into Syria in the last two weeks. Washington has not yet asked Iraqi Premier Nouri al-Maliki to stem the outward flow, realizing he is glad to see the backs of the terrorists and waving them across the border into Syria. In other words, al-Maliki is very, very pleased that al-Qaeda is going out of his country and over toward the west to help the Syrians, the Syrian rebels against Bashar al-Assad. And so we have a situation here in which al-Qaeda is becoming a major force in the Middle East, not simply a minor force governed by one eccentric crazy guy sitting in isolation somewhere. Al-Qaeda has been spreading and doing more harm in recent weeks. Our sources report from Western agencies fighting Al-Qaeda that several thousand operatives have arrived in Syria to fight the Assad regime, most entering the country from the north. Uh, they come fully armed with quantities of explosives, and among them are hundreds of Saudis, Egyptians, Lebanese, Palestinians, Iraqis and Sudanese. In other words, they come from all over the region, including Northwest Africa, to join the cause against Bashar al-Assad. This is quite fascinating. They quickly join up with the hundreds of al-Qaeda fighters from Libya, present at Free Syrian Army FSA training camps. The Free Syrian Army FSA uh, training camps in southeastern Turkey. Well, the FSA is another faction, and Al-Qaeda, of course, is helping the FSA, the Free Syrian Army, that is the army opposed to the forces of Bashar al-Assad. And there they are instructed in the geography of the Syrian government, army, and security forces locations led across the border and transported to their targeted positions by special guides. So they've got a real operation. Now you remember uh, a couple of days ago we talked to you about, uh, to you about the arrival of Un United Nations peacekeepers in Syria under the direction of Major General Robert Hode, who is a Norwegian. Uh, and just immediately after uh, Major General Hode and, and his group uh, a pitifully small group of people, by the way, arrived there. The fighting took an upward turn, and Al-Qaeda was at the forefront of it. This is amazing to me because uh, we are seeing the development of a northern army. Uh, again, we don't see a weakening of the forces north of Israel. We see a continual strengthening, and now the, one of the major factions coming in uh, to help uh, build that northern force 
It happens to be Al-Qaeda. Guess who Al-Qaeda is working with? They're working shoulder to shoulder with the Russians. <laughs> well, in a way they are. They're, they're working in the same region with, with Russian agents. And heaven only knows what kind of chicanery is going on there with the forces of Russia operating in conjunction with Bashar Assad, trying to pop uh, prop him up, uh, with the forces of uh, the Iraqi group of uh, Al-Qaeda coming in and setting up training camps. Uh, you, you have the possibility for numbers of different kinds of alliances and allegiances. The Bible tells us that in the end, uh, Damascus itself will be destroyed, and there will be the sudden uh, coalescing of a major force that uh, uh, is under the direction of the Russians and the Persians, that is the Iranians, which then moves to the south. And so we're watching the general trend of things to see if, in fact, we can catch some sign of, of that beginning to happen. You know, the prophet Micah talks about a time when a northern enemy comes down. Micah chapter 7, Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits and the grape, as the grape gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. The good man is perished out of the earth. There is none upright among men. They, they all lie and wait for blood. They hunt every man, his brother, with a net that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh, the judge asketh for a reward, and the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire. So they wrap it up, that is, they make a deal. Well, an evil time that begins with Micah's lament in Micah chapter 7, verse 1. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the uh, summer fruits. And then in, in verse 2, the good man is perished out of the earth. From a Hebrew word, that Hebrew word, by the way, avad, means to disappear. Poof, the good man, well, he's perished out of the earth, leaving only the blood-sucking, fiendish, corrupted, scheming, conniving remnant. And Micah uh, depicts this in a Latter-day prophecy. Uh, saying that there will be, at a certain point, the good man disappearing from the face of the earth. We may be living in that time. Isaiah chapter 57 picks up this same theme. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. The merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Isaiah 57, 1. Uh, the righteous perisheth. Again, it's that same Hebrew word, avad, which means to disappear. The righteous have disappeared, and in the wake of that disappearance comes utter chaos, uh, immorality laid bare, uh, every man seeing what he can eke out for himself, uh, economic chaos, and above all, the setting of a major battle. <clears throat> because if we go back, to uh, Micah chapter 7, we discover something kind of interesting. And that is that, that Micah, in the language of Micah, we find a, a hidden uh, clue <clears throat> as to what Micah is talking about. A hidden clue that's buried in a, in a term that he uses. He says, the best of them is a briar after this period of time when the righteous are taken from the earth, leaving this group of evil men. <clears throat> and in Micah 7, 4, the best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharp as a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh, and now shall be their perplexity. And buried in the Hebrew of that, that last sentence, the day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh, is the term that, that uh, relates to a northern arrival, something coming from the north as an invading army. <clears throat> I'll read it again. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. In other words, this is the day 
that everybody's been looking at for thousands of years, starting with the Old Testament prophets coming right down to the present day, when Israel would be regathered into the land only to be attacked by an invading army from the north. And here we have it expressed once again, Micah chapter 7, verse 4. Well, always something to think about. And, uh, of course, we're looking up because the Lord's coming soon. And, you know, I can't name a date. I can't tell you it'll be day after tomorrow. It might be this afternoon. But he is coming soon. So keep looking up. 